The committee is expected to announce referrals to the Justice Department for criminal charges against the former president, Donald Trump, for inciting the violence at the Capitol that day. As the committee prepares to deliver their closing arguments, let's take a look back at some of the biggest moments from the hearings. Not only did President Trump refuse to tell the mob to leave the Capitol, he placed no call to any element of the United States government to instruct that the Capitol be defended. What made you decide to leave? Um, basically, when President Trump put his tweet out, we literally left right after that come out. After our last hearing, President Trump tried to call a witness in our investigation. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Engel. What I saw was just a, a war scene. It, it was something like I had seen out of the movies. I, I, I couldn't believe my eyes. It's affecting my life in a, in a major way, in every way. All because of lies. I thought that the tweet about the vice president was the last thing that was needed in that moment. It was essentially him giving the green light to these uh, people, telling them that what they were doing at the steps of the Capitol and entering the Capitol was okay, that they were justified in their anger. And he shouldn't have been doing that. He should have been telling these people to go home and to leave. So let's bring in the person you just heard from there, former Deputy White House Press Secretary under former President Trump, Sarah Matthews, who resigned from the Trump administration the night of the riots and testified before the committee. You testified. You were one of the few people who went out there and actually did it. A lot of other people who were superior to you in the administration fought appearing before the committee, including the former vice president. I wonder, as we reflect on, on their work so far, if you think that the January 6th committee has accomplished what they set out to accomplish. I think they have been successful in their goal. I think that they wanted to shed light on um, what really happened. How could something like January 6th happen here in America? And what they uncovered is that this was a very orchestrated plot by President Trump and his conspirators. I was inside the White House myself, and I didn't even realize that this was even going on behind the scenes, the full extent of it. I was learning in real time with the American people watching it unfold in these hearings. And I think that the hearings were really compelling and um, provided a lot of evidence to show that Trump tried to overturn the election and then did not act on January 6th to do anything when a mob that he incited stormed the Capitol. And we're expecting the criminal referrals that are coming. As Don was saying earlier, that you know they don't—they have impact, but they don't have teeth. Essentially, mm -hmm. that they're—it doesn't actually require the Justice Department to act. I wonder if, as you've seen all this put together, you were there on January 6th inside the White House. Will you be disappointed if the Justice Department doesn't pursue that route? I will be disappointed. I think that you know no one's above the law, and it's uh, important to hold people accountable, President Trump included. And I think that the. Uh, it, it will be curious to see what DOJ has in terms of evidence compared to what the January 6th committee has. You know, the January 6th committee is planning to make all their evidence public um, from what I've heard, and so that's great. And then that could help potentially DOJ with their investigation. But it does seem DOJ is following a similar route right now to what the committee has pursued in terms of witnesses that they brought in and things of that nature. And so um, I hope that that's the case, though, that they'll pursue that route. I thought it was interesting to go back to something that you said. You said you were in the, the White House when it happened, mm -hmm. and you found out in real time that what was happening along with the American people, yet you were there. What, did, what is the disconnect yeah. um, between what was happening in the West Wing and what was happening with the president and the administration, and quite frankly, members of the administration and the American people? Because I find that fascinating that they, people weren't, you know, screaming at the top of their lungs, stop this! It seems like everyone in the White House should have known what was going on. Yeah, I think um, I was, you know, a couple layers removed being a deputy press secretary. I wasn't necessarily in those meetings privy to some of these conversations um, that some people that, you know, were more senior to me would have what been. Asking, was there an effort to suppress it or it was just sort of, it just happened that way? 
You know, I think that um, there was an effort to suppress it. I think uh, people on the campaign side as well were trying to tell the president, hey, you know what, there's no evidence here. Once all his litigation failed, there's no evidence, um, you know, to overturn the results of the election. And um, that's when you started to see President Trump not listen to those folks anymore and then start to listen more to the people who are feeding him conspiracies and lies. And it seems he's convinced himself of those lies. Wow. And in this time since January 6th, and what I was struck by that day is speaking with people, your colleagues in the White House, people were so freaked out by what happened that day. People, a lot of people were like you, were so upset by what happened. Not all of them resigned. I wonder what you make of how people, how you saw your colleagues actually react that day versus how people may try to portray what we see today, how they try to downplay the committee, given it is coming to an end. Yeah, I think that um, that day, you know, my colleagues inside the White House and you know, friend, Republicans um, that I'm friends with on Capitol Hill, um, everyone across the board was equally disturbed. I mean, it was one of the darkest days, I think, in our nation's history. But um, I do think it's strange how now some people, you know, were a couple years removed from it, um, seem to have short memories and not realize uh, just how big of a deal that day was. And I think a lot of Republicans would rather um, move on from it, whitewash over the events of that day for political expediency, which is disappointing because I do think that, like I said earlier, no one is above the law. Donald Trump needs to be held accountable, and so do his co-conspirators. Right. Sarah Matthews, Sarah. thanks for joining us this morning. We know we have a lot, a lot to come today, so thanks for sharing your insight on that. Thank you.